Yeah. Hey, what's happening? Uh, so I'm going to go through some of my work, um, some of it just to give you examples of the, the type of work I do, and then towards the end I have some uh, the cartoons I did after the Charlie Hebdo killings, and um, and then right before the uh, the shooting in Texas at the the Draw Muhammad um, contest. So this is uh, I ended the year with this cartoon. The, a lot of these are multi-panel, so I'm gonna this isn't the the total cartoon. I'm gonna flip through them and read them. Um, I finished the year with this cartoon uh, in 2015. It sort of sums up a lot of uh, how the year went. No, all lives matter, you hear me? All lives. Oh, thank God, I was fleeing the war zone. No Muslims allowed, can't you read? Um, I think this next one is, I did after the, uh, I did this uh, almost immediately after the Newtown uh, massacre shooting, when people were saying that uh, te all teachers should be armed and everything. So a, a lot of times when you do something like this directly after uh, a tragedy and you know people are mourning and stuff, uh, they'll they'll give you shit for doing cartoons like this because you're they'll say you're making fun of the situation or you know it's, it's no time for humor. But um, it's I don't really do like mournful cartoons or sad cartoons or you know a lot of times when there's a tragedy like the Boston bombing or something you'll see editorial cartoonists will do like the uh, first responders or something about the victims, but I usually just kind of go straight to uh, making fun of stuff. Not the victims, but making fun of things nonetheless. Let's arm everyone. All right, class, we're going to do a little reading. Well, who's that? Everybody get down. That's eh, just Custodian Bill. <laughs> Sorry to startle, it came to empty the trash. I don't feel any safer. Here, you can borrow my backup piece. <laughs> So, uh, uh, this is just a quick, uh, uh, a one panel. Um, at least I don't have to put up with her level of sexual harassment. <laughs> and uh, this is Rick Santorum, by the way, from last election. Uh, government should be small and unobtrusive, so women don't notice it in their uteruses. He's, uh, I got into political cartooning uh, in 2003 in the run-up to the Iraq War. So I did my first political cartoon for my then college newspaper in, I think, February of 2003, right before we invaded. Um, so that was the main motivating factor for me. And So uh, the 10th anniversary of the Iraq War was a couple years ago at this point, but <clears throat> this is what I did uh, for that. And you'll remember at the time uh, that George Bush it was in the news uh, for, he was like, started, started painting. He's just hanging out <laughs> on his ranch, painting. Um, and he had this they were odd. One was like him in the shower, and one was him in the bathtub with his feet sticking out. So, ten years after the invasion, President Bush is kicking back, painting his feet. Uh, and, uh, oh, this is probably uh, the most famous cartoon I've ever did. Um, non white babies now number white babies in America for the first time. Second. <laughs> When something like that happens, I mean, it just sort of, it, it was, you know, world news, but it, in the cartooning world, I mean, it's completely dominated. I think all of us were being called and interviewed. All of a sudden, everyone cared about political cartoons. And, you know, I couldn't help but uh, note that that usually isn't the case. So this was my, actual, my first response where, um, instead of honoring the prophet in America, we honor the prophet. Uh, take us to your political cartoonist. We fired him three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so few people to kill. Um, so the cartoon I have over there was, was I think, the second one I did. And I'll, since I do multiple multiple panels, I'm always trying to kind of, you know, hit hit different beats and get hit all the bases, as I would say. Which is like, all right, you had you know the media, which wouldn't even show the cartoons. Then sort of the Gary Trudeau argument, which is like, you know, right after the cartoonists die, you're like, you know, I too find those images offensive. They, they, they kind of had a good point. And then maybe they did because there's like, they're crude drawings that use stereotypes and everything. So this was sort of, uh, oh, important to, uh, to note, which is at the time, a lot of cartoonists were doing uh, 
cartoons that included giant flying pencils at, at terrorists and stuff. In fact, I think Lalo was probably the first because they, he drew it on a plane and then tweeted a picture of it, and then it went like crazy. So, <clears throat> whoop. Everything is bad. Jihadists think murdering cartoonists is cool if you don't like their work. Enhanced letter to the editor techniques. <laughs> the free press can't even bring themselves to show you some mad comics. Pixelated for human safety. And it's perhaps a bit crass to go full victim blamer. Murder is bad, sure, but the cartoonists were no angels. <laughs> if I'm killed by the humorless, please bury me in a giant pencil coffin I deserve for my brave, brave doodles. <laughs> Um, there we go, rest in pencils. Uh, this is a um, panel from a cartoonist, Annette Carlson, who's one of the original uh, Danish Muhammad cartoonists. And uh, this is a comic she drew for the site I edit, The Nib, where she was talking about the process she went through to draw this and how there was this crazy, unexpected backlash. And. You know, there's a little bit of a misconception about all the cartoons, which is, you know, they weren't all racist or provocative. Some of them were making fun of the contest itself. Some were sort of like middle of the road or, you know, trying to make a point about psychoism. They all sort of got lumped into this, you know, being the Muhammad cartoons. And so her thought process here is uh, in trying to construct something is, you know, if I could just make a really clever and extremely funny cartoon, it's not easy, I don't want to bully mus Muslims, and I don't want to be bullied by their dogmas, but what a lot of things to put in a cartoon. And she said, you know, <laughs> the message really didn't get through, which is uh, clear now in retrospect. But that's what I was trying to do. I, I, I include this because it's what I was trying to do after, um, after the Charlie Hebdo shootings. Um, you know, the, there's the the debate that's basically encapsulated by, encapsulated by Gary Trudeau's argument. And, you know, I agree with some of it. I mean, I don't spend my time drawing racist cartoons, but I also don't want to avoid drawing uh, Muhammad because someone will kill me. So, you know, uh, I constructed this Muhammad cartoon that I'll just uh, read through, which is, hey, uh, welcome to paradise, jihadi dudes. Great job on all the killing. Yeah, we showed those cartoonists and that nice Muslim police officer a thing or two. Wait, are we in? An obit cartoon with a drawing of Muhammad? Afraid so. <laughs> oh, that's the worst thing ever! Kill everyone, because I'm mad. Chill out, guys. It's a pretty mediocre cartoon. <laughs> so, you know, a lot, so, some people, you know, wrote me and said I was inflaming the situation by drawing this, but I kind of wanted to prove that you could, you know, you could draw a Muhammad cartoon without you know, resorting to racist caricature and without, you know, Muslims themselves being a target, and it's kind of clearly uh, targeted towards the, the killers. Uh, but, you know, there's still people who, of course, thought I shouldn't do this. And then I think I have, well, one more after this. Um, so in the run-up to the, uh, the shooting at the, um, the Texas Draw Muhammad cartoon contest thing, there was actually some... Uh, online chatter, as they say, that was, uh, you know, encouraging people to take up arms against, um, there was a cartoonist in Australia who had drawn Muhammad, and then this Pamela Geller organized conference was sort of getting uh, some press. So, you know, these two guys that went went there were, uh, you know, in touch with um, a, a jihadist in Somalia, I think, through Twitter who kind of uh, helped inspire them to go there. So this is a, I did this last cart, I did this cartoon before, like a week or two before the shooting in Texas because I had read about, um, Foreign Policy wrote this article saying this guy who's an American who's in Somalia has been um, tweeting about somebody going to Garland, Texas and killing these people. So my cartoon was, uh, cool news, jihadists are urging uh, attacks on cartoonists in Australia and America who've drawn Muhammad. It's disrespectful to the Muslims we behead daily. <laughs> they raise a good point though, satire should punch up, not down, like how dumb cartoonists might do. Look, I drew the rioters. And uh, you know, this is satirizing some of my, uh, uh, no one who's on this uh, panel, of course, but there's, uh, there's, there's quite a number of reactionary editorial cartoonists. 
Uh, and you know, apocalyptic madmen with guns are basically cartoon connoisseurs. Oh, the irony here is sublime. <laughs> now, I find this one quite problematic. <laughs> Uh, sad though, if they kill me, I'll miss all the post-massacre think pieces. It's a clash of civilizations. Tut-tut, it's about my personal views. Wait, that sounds like heaven to me. Oh. 